Today is one of the biggest days of the entire week where we are expecting rapid intensification at a tropical storm Helene later today and it is expected to become a major hurricane as it approaches Florida more than likely as a high end category three or a low end category four hurricane right now this is what it looks like on the infrared imagery we have a huge amount of convection happening in the northwestern Caribbean Sea as it starts to approach Cancun and then after it passes through the Yucatan Channel this is expected to rapidly intensify later today today into a major hurricane probably by late tonight into tomorrow morning but overall the system looks pretty organized it's definitely becoming more intense this is a closer view of it notice again huge convective towers across the entire northern and eastern side of the circulation you might think that's a little eye trying to pop out right well not necessarily we don't have an eye yet but as we go later into today and as well as into tonight i think we'll begin to start to see our first signs of an actual eye forming as this moves into the gulf of mexico and we now officially have a ton of hurricane watches and warnings in effect across the state of Florida. Hurricane warnings in effect from approximately Panama City back just to the north of Tampa Bay. There are also tropical storm warnings in effect in the blue shaded areas. That does include most of western and southwestern Florida and also almost the entire east coast of Florida. The only exception really being actually back down near Miami. So Miami is one of the few spots in Florida that will actually be a bit more safe from this hurricane, which is kind of crazy to think. Most of the time they at least get something this time around not really expecting much in that area you probably already heard me mention the term rapid intensification and the reason why i'm mentioning that is because we are expecting a very favorable environment today in the southern gulf of mexico that consists of very deep warm waters to be able to help increase the intensity of this upcoming hurricane as it moves into the gulf of mexico and after it moves into the gulf it's gonna have a good 24 hours or so of very prime conditions once it gets closer to the florida coastline and approximately close to landfall it will probably still be intensifying a little bit, but I don't expect any rapid intensification closer to the Florida coastline. So the majority of the intensification today will happen between Wednesday afternoon and evening all the way into Thursday morning, probably as late as lunchtime. And the latest from the National Hurricane Center in terms of the forecast is that this is expected to become a strong hurricane as we go throughout the day today. Eventually by Thursday morning, this will be flirting on the edge of being a Category 2 slash 3 hurricane just to the southwest of Tampa. Eventually as we go into Thursday afternoon and evening, this is expected to make landfall in the state of Florida as a major hurricane. The current forecast calls that this will be a high-end Category 3 hurricane, so there is a possibility, depending on how things go today and tomorrow morning, that this could make a run at a low-end Category 4 hurricane. That means that you should be prepared, again, for a major hurricane if you live in the state of Florida. All impacts are going to be possible, including storm surge, tornadoes, flooding, rainfall. In addition to that, we'll have the potential for hurricane-force winds, and and as we go inland, eventually by Friday morning, this will weaken down to a tropical depression, but I still expect wind gusts to be pretty high, even up into North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee, where there will be some isolated to perhaps even scattered power outages. And then eventually the Fujiwara effect will take place as we go into Saturday, where essentially two different low pressure systems will combine into one over the Ohio Valley, and that'll lead to some additional rainfall for areas like Tennessee, Kentucky, and also a few other surrounding states. Now let's take you through a scenario with lean over the next couple of days in terms of intensity and also where this is likely to make landfall. This is a hurricane model. It is built specifically for hurricanes, so these are usually very accurate. This is what we're looking at throughout the morning today into the afternoon. We are going to start to see rapid intensification as this moves into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's really going to ramp up overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. By Thursday morning, this thing is going to be a very intense Category 3, perhaps even again a low-end Category 4 hurricane cannot be ruled out at this point as we go into Thursday morning. By by Thursday afternoon, this is continuing to race to the north and east. The HAFSB model run continues to have this as a very intense hurricane around quarter, Category 4 to even near Category 5 strength. Now, again, my forecast is not Category 5. I'm still on the high-end Cat 3, low-end Cat 4 spectrum when it comes to my forecast. I can't rule out a Cat 5. I just think it's a low chance as of right now. It's going to take a lot for that to happen, but it is a very favorable environment. There's really not much stopping this thing from intensifying aside from really just time in the Gulf. This is by the time it makes landfall Thursday evening. Right now, this model has it making landfall just to the east, east of Apalachicola near Perry, Florida. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that this model has it making landfall a bit further east than a lot of the uh, basically consensus has been on the most recent model runs. A lot of models have it actually making landfall just east of Panama City. My personal thinking this entire time has been kind of more towards Cedar Key, Florida, maybe just to the north of that. So right now, forecasts are kind of, you know, a little bit all over the place. A 30-mile shift 
to the east or west will make a major difference when it comes to impacts to perhaps Tampa Bay or even for Panama City. So obviously, if you're anywhere near this coastline, you need to be prepared for direct landfall. You don't want to be preparing for the what ifs, because if you do prepare for the what ifs, you're basically preparing for a guessing game, which is not something that you want to be doing. Here's the most recent model guidance in terms of where this is likely to make landfall. A lot of models have it making landfall right up in the Big Bend, just east of Panama City. Again, this is subject to change. We've seen it shift east and west over the last you know couple of days. It's possible that this goes back to the east again, uh, closer to maybe again, maybe like Cedar Key. So keep that in mind. Uh, overall, though, the general consensus is that this will be making landfall somewhere up in the Big Bend of Florida. Now let's jump into the impacts of what Hurricane Helene is going to do. And we're going to begin with the wind gust potential and the power outage potential, especially across the southeast United States. The tropical storm force wind field will start to reach western Florida as early as overnight tonight to tomorrow morning, mainly for Tampa, Sarasota, and Cape Coral. Winds really start to pick up across the entire state just after lunchtime tomorrow. Worst of the wind will be offshore Thursday afternoon, but we are going to start to see those winds really pick up, especially just north of Tampa, back near Cape Coral, and also back through the basically the entire big bend of Florida, with hurricane force winds arriving by as early as about 4 or 5 o'clock. Winds will be impacting, again, basically the entire state of Florida. It's going to be a massive hurricane in terms of size. Areas like Daytona Beach, Palm Bay, and Port St. Lucie, I could see those wind gusts being about 10 to 15 miles per hour higher than what this model indicates. Same thing with Orlando and Gainesville, so be prepared for that. Once we get closer to landfall, winds are peaking around 90 to 100 miles per hour for wind gusts, perhaps even higher near the landfall spot back over here in the Big Bend of Florida, and then eventually as we go into Friday morning, the wind starts to die down, and we'll start to basically go into, you know, recovery efforts across the state of Florida for whatever impacts have been made. Back over in the Ohio Valley, we'll be also dealing with some high winds, but mainly in the southeast. This area back over in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee will have the potential for some isolated to scattered power outages as the winds will remain high through Wednesday or sorry through Friday morning and then eventually as we go into Friday afternoon those wind gusts will kind of spread out anywhere from Oklahoma all the way back over into Pennsylvania and that'll continue as we go into early Saturday. If any hurricane power outages are always a concern and this hurricane will be no exception. This is the latest in terms of a forecast in terms of power outages. I want to make two notes though before I go into this. Widespread is actually going to be scattered and significant will be widespread. So basically what we're talking about is the potential for some widespread power outages across parts of southern Georgia, back into the Big Bend of Florida, and essentially up and down here the west coast of Florida. I could see this, though, being a little bit on the lower side of things when it comes to widespread power outages near Tampa, especially if this tracks more towards areas like Panama City. But on the flip side of things, we are still talking about scattered power outages anywhere in the dark red from just west of Miami all the way back up into northeast Georgia and South Carolina, and then some more isolated power outages could exist as far north as Kentucky and as far south as southeastern Florida, like areas like Miami. And when it comes to the worst of the hurricane force wind field, we are going to see the worst of it near Perry, Florida, and Apalachicola, at least with the current forecast and thinking. That's where we could see category three plus winds. Tallahassee, Panama City, going to kind of be in that hurricane force wind field. Albany, even in Georgia. Gainesville will probably at least be talking about strong tropical storm force winds, but I wouldn't be surprised with some low end hurricane force winds if the track shifts closer to Cedar Key, like I think might happen. There are so many impacts that are going to be felt out of Hurricane Helene, and another big one, and really I think the biggest one, will be the storm surge threat, especially across the coastal regions of Florida. The National Hurricane Center currently forecasting upwards of 10 to 15 feet of peak storm surge between areas essentially just east of Panama City all the way back through areas north of Tampa. It is going to be a pretty large area where we're going to be dealing with significant storm surge. In addition to that, Tampa Bay and back even closer to Englewood, we'll be talking about 4 to 8 feet of storm surge, so make sure if you're near the coastal regions, you are taking evacuation orders seriously. Charlotte Harbor back into southwest Florida, three to five feet of storm surge. The Florida Keys, only a foot to three feet, so not nearly as bad. Even look at the coastline over here on the east coast. This is not going to go into the Atlantic Ocean, just for reference, but what's going to happen is we are going to have strong enough winds offshore to push some water inland, so up to one to three feet of storm surge will be possible from the Flagler Volusia County line in Florida, all the way back up into the South Sante River in South Carolina. You don't get the impact of storm surge. This is one way to look at it. I mean, this is just kind of a crazy 
crazy comparison, but literally the storm surge that we could see in Cedar Key could be 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. That's not even on this chart. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're anywhere near the coastline, you should be evacuating. You are not going to be taller than the storm surge that's going to be out there, especially near the coastline of the Big Bend. If you thought we were done with impacts, trust me, we're not done. We have another big impact, which is going to be the potential for flooding rainfall across Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, even parts of Alabama. Main areas that we're going to be watching for upwards of even some localized spots near 12 inches of rain will be back over in the Big Bend of Florida near Tallahassee and again widespread area of one to three inches across all of Florida but the areas that are going to hit the worst will be in the yellow and orange shaded areas really on Friday we're going to see a lot of rain especially back over in Georgia South Carolina North Carolina and Tennessee where many areas will pick up between five to ten inches of rain some localized spots over a foot of rain are likely thank you so much for watching make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already